Bonjour and welcome my bells and bats and thank you for joining me if you are new here. My name is Sheena Peril and I'm the author of 13 books. My latest volume, Midnight Radio, comes out April 22nd, 2024. I wanted this to be a chatty sit-down video where I just spoke freely, but that wasn't possible today for reasons directly related to the subject of this video. If you've been on my channel for a little while, you are probably aware I've had some health struggles for the past few years. The short version is that I recently discovered the SSRI I've been on for years was causing chronic fatigue and silent migraines. This was something that built up over time, so for the first year everything was fine, but then my symptoms got worse and worse, and because they didn't start when I started taking the medication, no one linked the two together. Anyway, once I realized that that was what was going on, I started a journey to find a new medication. However, so far I have not found one that doesn't make me exhausted, throw up all the time, or want to yeet myself from a tall building. I'm having a lot of physical symptoms as a result, and the brain fog today is bad. I filmed about 20 minutes of me talking to the camera, but I couldn't stay on target and I kept trailing off because my brain just stopped working and I couldn't string two words together. So instead, you get voiceover Sheena and some live footage of me struggling with the things I'm talking about today. I was diagnosed as having autism and ADHD just over a year ago. I was diagnosed as having anxiety and depression in 2017, but I've had both my entire life. This is a combination of childhood trauma, genetics, and just the difficulty that comes from being neurodivergent in a neurotypical world, specifically in a time and location where such things are not welcome. I went through the first 25 years of my life with absolutely no assistance or accommodations. It wasn't until I went into what I now know was autistic burnout and all of the coping mechanisms I'd built up since childhood stopped working at the same time that I was able to admit that I needed chemical assistance. Knowing now that my brain does not produce the chemicals it is supposed to is a huge relief. Just like a diabetic's pancreas doesn't produce enough insulin or my thyroid doesn't produce enough thyroid hormone, my brain does not produce enough serotonin or dopamine for me to function normally without help. So what does all of this have to do with writing? I've noticed that not too many authors, at least not too many that show up in my YouTube feed, talk about this for one reason or another, and it is hard to talk about. I know that I'm opening myself up to a lot of negative feedback, so just keep in mind my comments are moderated and I do delete anything offensive. Sometimes my autism feels like a superpower, but other times it most definitely feels like a disability. Other times it just feels neutral, it's a part of me the same way my scars or my gray eyes or brown hair are. It's just there, but the way people react to it can be hurtful. So let's start with the mental health issues. Right now my brain weasels keep escaping their enclosure. It's not just depression, but it's frustration with myself, fear of the future, and anger that I can't make things work. I should be able to, right? I am a perfectly capable adult human. So why is this happening to me? Why can't I fix it? I've mentioned before that depressed Sheena is very unreliable. She will do things like try to push through the negative emotions to get some writing or editing done, open a document, decide it's the worst thing ever and there's no point in ever letting it see the light of day, then deleting it and emptying the recycle bin. So for this reason, when my mental health is bad, I just stay away from the computer for the most part. I don't write, I don't edit. I also stay off of social media because my response to depression and anxiety is to isolate. Alone is safe, and that includes being apart from internet people. Normally, I have chemical help with this, as I said. Right now, that's not working out too well. I'm working with my doctor to find something that will, but for the meantime, I just have to keep pushing through and remember to hydrate because I might break down in tears at any given moment. I never thought that I had ADHD until I got my diagnosis, and then all of a sudden it was so obvious. The way I desire a clean, organized space but can't keep it that way. The way I'm constantly bouncing back and forth between subjects and interests. The way I get tons of new ideas but never the ability or will to follow through. 
all of that can be tracked back to my ADHD. This means that I have a very diverse range of interests, but they tend to be quite shallow unless they're one of my autistic special interests. For example, I could tell you all the history you don't want to know about knitting, but my knowledge of weaving, dyeing, lace making, and other textile art is much less involved, even though I've read a bit about pretty much all of them. This lack of organization and focus has been hard for me to manage, but I think I finally have something that is working for me, for the moment at least. I have a lot of notebooks floating around, but I try to keep them all in the same place. Each notebook also has a pen attached to it. This is important. If I want to make a note in that notebook, I have to have a pen handy, so I just clip one to the cover of all of my notebooks. If the pen is not there, I either won't write it down or I will write it down in the wrong place. Hence, pen attached to all notebooks at all times. I have my day planner, which is everything I need to keep and reference regularly. I've also got a scrap notebook where I make short-term lists, brain dump, that kind of thing. I also have my journal where I try to write daily, especially when I know my emotions or hormones are out of whack. And there are other notebooks besides, one for knitting, one for an RPG I play, one for a big research project, another for my current novel, one where I track all of my reading and media. Content from any of those notebooks might at some point get transferred to my planner and vice versa. This probably sounds like a complicated system to a lot of you, but for me, it's working. When it stops working, I'll come up with something else. Sometimes I need everything in the same notebook. Right now, I need things broken up by subject. Until I was in college, I never finished writing a novel. I think part of that had to do with the ADHD, but another part of that was just that I needed to mature more I needed to mature more as a person before I was able to th see things through to the end, and that's okay. I recognized that I was very emotionally immature then because I was surrounded by emotionally immature adults. The difficulties I went through growing up directly influenced my writing, both the subject matter and the technique. And if you've ever read the Evie Capelli series, you know. You know. And just a side note, one of my future videos in the next month or two is actually going to be diving through my unfinished object bin as an author. Another thing I struggle with as a result of autism is comfort zones. I am always looking for a safe space. Again, this probably goes back to the mental health childhood trauma cycle, but it can be very hard for me to do new things, especially if it involves other people. Going to new events alone for the first time, trying a new social media platform, having to learn a new piece of software or a new website because the one I've been using is no longer supported. These are all so hard, and I tend to hand them off to people who are better with with technology than me, or someone who is more skilled in that area. Unfortunately, this whole comfort zone thing also means that I don't make friends easily because I don't talk to anyone. So usually it ends up being me muddling through on my own or with some help from someone who is equally lost, but at least there for moral support. Knowing I'm autistic has been a big help in this way because it's allowed me to accommodate for myself and the things I struggle with. For example, I know to bring earplugs to large events. I know to set aside a chunk of time when I have to learn a new skill and what resources I need to use. Is it something best learned through a video or by doing it myself with a text guide open on the same screen? Is there someone I know through social media that I can ask questions of? Of course, the hardest part of all of this is finding and connecting with audiences. I'm not great at connecting with anyone, but trying to not only make friends with strangers over the internet and also sell things, that is so hard. I'm not good at making friends anyway, and trying to do it in a semi-professional way is just... Ugh. I'm the type of person where even at my day job, I'm not there to make friends. I don't talk to other people unless I have a reason to, and no, the weather is not a good reason. So when I do try reaching out to new people, I usually feel like I'm shouting into the void. I haven't found a way around this. I want to come off as friendly, but also that's awkward, but I also don't want to be salesperson-y because that's even worse than awkward. 
Part of the problem is my autistic aversion to small talk. Social media anymore feels like nothing but small talk. Thanks to the implosion of Twitter, a huge chunk of my online friend group is just gone. They've moved to other platforms, and I can't keep up with all of them. The dynamic has also changed, and I'm not great with change. This leads me to my next challenge, which is the self-doubt and rejection sensitivity that I experience as a trauma survivor and ADHD. -er. I'm a socially awkward panda, so if I feel like you are judging me or not connecting in the way I'd hoped, it often feels like an out-and-out -out rejection, which, like a lot of people with ADHD, I'm extremely sensitive to. And all of this ties back to my dodgy mental health, so it's a circle. It's the least fun merry-go-round I've ever been on. I would like to get off now, please. I am far from an expert or the end-all be-all when it comes to ADHD or autism. These are just things that I personally struggle with and how I personally deal with them. If you have questions or want to share your experiences, I invite you to do so in the comments. This is a safe space and comments will be moderated accordingly. Please stay safe, stay healthy, and until next time, I hope you have something cute and fluffy to cuddle with. Ciao.